Maayong adlaw, magandang araw, and good day. I am Pisho Carpus. And I am Paulette Torres. Today, we will discuss the food security status in the municipality of Pantukan from September to October 2019. We will start off by introducing the demographics of the population sample. The municipality assigned to us was the municipality of Pantukan, which is a first-class municipality in the province of Davao de Oro in the Philippines, which means that it has obtained an average annual income of 15 million pesos or more. It has a population of 90,768 based on a 2020 consensus and is composed of 13 barangays in which 7 are urban and 6 are rural. The respondents of the survey are 33 individuals coming from 33 households of Pantukan. For the household head demographics, it shows that most of the household heads are from the non-Poblacion areas. 20 are from non-Poblacion and 13 are from Poblacion. It also shows that most of them are male. 27 are male and 6 are female. The ages of the household heads range from 25 to 80 years old, with 80 years old being the oldest, 41 years old being the middle age, and 25 years old being the youngest. For the educational attainment of the household heads, it shows that only 5 out of the 33 household heads have college as their highest educational attainment. On the other hand, 14 household heads reach the elementary level and 14 also reached high school. Moving on to the work status and industry of the household heads. Most of the household heads, 14 out of 33, have regular work or work for 40 hours per week. And most of them work in non-agriculture-related work industries, given that only 10 out of the 33 work in agriculture, fishing, and forestry industries. For the average monthly income and for these members, the graph on the left shows that majority or 18 out of 33 households have an average monthly income of less than 5,000 pesos, while the graph on the right shows that most or 20 out of 33 households are not part of the government's Pantawid Familiang Filipino Program or the 40, while 12 are members and one did not answer. For the household sizes, it ranges from 2 members to 11 members, with 2 as the minimum and 11 at the maximum, with a median value of 5 members in one household. For this diagram, we can observe that the median weekly household expenditure for food items is greater than the median weekly household expenditure for non-food items. Lastly, in this graph, more than half of the child respondents are beneficiaries of DepEd school-based feeding program, where 17 are beneficiaries and 16 are not. Most of the beneficiaries are male, which are 11 out of 17. So from this information, we compared the household size and the weekly food expenditure of the household using correlation. Logically, one would think that as the household size increases, the weekly food expenditure also increases. However, the obtained R value of 0 0.009 shows a negligible correlation between the two variables. This could be due to the fact that most of the households have low average monthly income, resulting in a low allocation for their food and monthly needs. Majority of the households at 60.6% are also non forties members and don't receive additional cash assistance, which makes their financial resources limited. Next, we have the food security status of households in Pantukan. Food security, as defined by US USAID, is a state in which all people at all times have both physical and economic access to sufficient food to meet their dietary needs for a productive and healthy life. There are four types of indicators used to understand the characteristics of and changes in household food insecurity access in the surveyed population. These are conditions, domains, scale score, and prevalence. So 
So the conditions provide specific disaggregated information about the behaviors and perceptions of the surveyed households. So under anxiety and uncertainty, 84.85% of the households worried about not having enough food. Under insufficient quality, 78.79% did not eat preferred foods, 75.76% ate a limited variety of foods, and 75.76% had to eat unpreferred foods. Under insufficient food intake and its physical consequences, 57.58% ate a smaller meal, 30.30% ate fewer meals in a day, 30.30% had no food of any kind in the household, 24.24% went to sleep hungry, and 0% went a whole day and night without eating. For the second indicator, we have the domains. This provides summary information on the prevalence of households experiencing one or more behaviors in each of the three domains reflected in the HFIAS. Based on the data, 84.85% or 28 out of 33 households experience anxiety and uncertainty. 76.77% experience insufficient quality about acquiring food and 47.96% experience insufficient food intake and its physical consequences about acquiring food. Next, we have the scale score, which is a continuous measure of the degree of food insecurity or access in the household. The higher the score, the more food insecurity or access the household experiences. So the least score recorded was zero, which meant that at least one respondent did not experience any behavior in each of the three domains. The highest recorded score among the respondents was 16, and the average score was 6.88. This means that within the municipality, the score of the entire household is low. The last indicator is prevalence. It is a categorical indicator of food insecurity status that can be used to report household food insecurity prevalence and make geographic targeting decisions. The graph shows that only 1 or 3% of the households are food secure, meaning it has experienced none of the food insecurity conditions or just rarely worried about having enough food. 5 or 15.2% are mildly food insecure, which is categorized as households that worry about their food and or, or consume a less desirable diet. 15 or 45.5% are moderately food insecure, meaning they have consumed a monotonous diet or ate undesir undesirable foods and or, or consume smaller meal size. And lastly, 12 or 36.4% of the respondents are severely food insecure which means that this households experience running out of food, going to bed hungry, or going a whole day and night without eating, even as infrequently as rarely. For the comparing subgroups, we compared the number of households per food insecurity status per residence type. For Poblacion, none is food secure, two are mildly food insecure, seven are moderately food insecure, and four are severely food insecure. For non-poblacion, one is food secure, three are mildly food insecure, eight are, eight are moderately food insecure, and eight are severely food insecure. This illustrates that most of the households that are moderately and severely food insecure are from the non-poblacion areas. For the household food insecurity status and gender, most of the households that are mildly food insecure, 5 out of 5, moderately, moderately food insecure, and severely food insecure, 10 out of 12 are headed by males. Next, for the household food insecurity status and highest educational attainment, most of the households that are moderately food insecure have had whose highest educational attainment is high school. On the other hand, most of the households that are severely food insecure 
have had whose highest educational attainment is elementary. For the household food insecurity status and child feeding program participation, most of the households that are moderately food insecure have children who are beneficiaries of the at school-based feeding program. This also shows that most of the severely food insecure have children who are not SBFP beneficiaries. So comparing their household food insecurity status and their work status, the graph shows that most of the households that are severely food insecure have heads that have occasional work, which are 10 out of 12 while one is unemployed and the other one has regular work. On the other hand, most of the households that are moderately food insecure have heads who have regular work. So comparing it with type of work industry, households that are moderately food insecure have more heads who engage in non-agriculture related industries or 10 out of 15, than those who engage in agriculture-related industries at 5 out of 15. This is also true with the households that are severely food insecure, which have 7 who work in non-agriculture-related industries and 5 who work in agriculture, all out of 12 heads. So comparing their status with 4 piece membership, most of the households that are moderately food insecure, or 8 out of 15, are non 4 piece members. On the other hand, more than half, or 7 out of 12, of the households that are severely food insecure are also non 4 piece members. Lastly, for this graph, it shows that most of the households that have an average monthly income of less than 5,000 pesos are severely food insecure, or 10 out of 18. There is also a high number of households that are moderately food insecure under the same income range or 7 out of 18. Next, we have vulnerabilities. Based on the generated profiling and data gathered, food insecurity was higher in non-publishing areas, households with heads who only have occasional work, households with non porpis member, households with heads with lower educational attainment, households in e Households engaged in non-agriculture related work industries and households with an average monthly income of less than 5,000 pesos. As shown in figure 1, being a beneficiary of the 4 piece does not guarantee immediate household food security since some 4 piece members are still moderately and severely food insecure. Based on figure 2, it can be inferred that the household head's educational attainment affects the food security status of the entire household since households with heads with lower educational attainment have lower levels of food security. This can be seen as a vulnerability since household heads with low educational attainment may find it harder to look for higher paying jobs and have stable income that can meet their needs. As shown in Figure 3, the majority of the households have an average monthly income of less than 5,000 pesos. This has a significant impact on their overall standard of living since their expenditure on food and non-food items is limited. Figure 4 shows that only 42.4% of the household heads have regular work, while the remaining 57.6% do not have a reliable source of income due to occasional work and unemployment. Since the majority of the households lack a stable source of income to meet their daily necessities, this creates a high risk of instability. As seen in Figure 5, most of the households that have heads who only have occasional work are considered severely food insecure since their source of income is not that reliable. For the recommendation, in light of the results of the assessment of the food security of 33 households in the municipality of Pantukan and the vulnerabilities identified, the group recommends the following. First, municipal leaders should open job opportunities that can provide regular work for household heads, accommodate those who have reached lower educational attainments, and allow them to have other sources of income. Next, funds should be allocated for the creation and application of regional strategies aimed at enhancing food security. Proper allocation may also make products more cost-effective and efficient, lowering the prices of nutrient-rich meals, and raising the accessibility and affordability of healthy diets 
while also ensuring that no one is left behind. Third, promotion of increased agricultural productivity and supply with a stronger contribution to food security and proper nourishment for the people through the dissemination of best farming techniques. Lastly, the government can pass laws that support the operation of small family farms, provide farmers with access to reasonable loans, and assist them in finding solutions in problems related to agriculture. We hope that the findings and recommendations of this assessment can contribute to the development planning of the municipality of Santuga. We also hope that this can be the start of households in cities and municipalities to being hunger-free. Thank you for listening and have a good day to everyone.